those differential equations uh, which are there in your slide. You have all the answer to that. So now, let me come to the solution of a differential equation. And uh, let me tell you that I am giving you an ordinary differential equation here. Okay. As I have told you, that uh, a differential equation of order n, nth order differential equation, nth order differential equation. So I can put it, of course, I mean here, if your y is your dependent variable, and if your x is independent variable, so then I can write this nth order differential equation uh, like this. Okay, fine. And uh, uh, here you know what uh, this uh, this y prime is the first order derivative, and uh, here up to this, this is nothing but the nth order derivative. And of course, here while we are uh, expressing a differential equation like this, we are assuming that it is differentiable at least up to nth order. Okay, and uh, then what happens if I can find if I can find a function phi of the uh, independent variable x in such a way that in such a way that I get an identity, I get an identity <coughs> like this. Okay, so then I say that your y equal to phi x is a Solution of the differential equation. Solution of the given differential equation. Say, let me call it A. Is it okay with everybody? Right? So, this is pretty simple. Okay? So, uh, okay? So, this is the formal definition. Here you can see that A function phi, and of course, I mean, here you can see that uh, the interval. The interval i has been rotated here. I didn't mention about that to you earlier. So any function phi defined on an interval i and possessing at least nth n derivatives that are continuous on i. So it has to be continuously differentiable up to nth order, as I have told you. Okay? And when substituted into an nth order ordinary differential equation like this, Okay, reduces the equation to an identity like this, then we say that phi is a solution of the differential equation in that interval. Okay, so you may be thinking, I didn't go in the concept of interval while I was defining uh, the solution of a differential equation. I, I had intentional done, done that because this interval of definition, this interval of definition is from interval of definition. Or interval of validity, and I think it has uh, I mean more terminology, which you will see in the slide later on. It is very very important in the context of the solution of an ordinary differential equation. Okay, fine. I will tell you about that uh, in a short while from now. So now let us concentrate on this interval of definition a little bit more. Okay, so let me see what is there. So this I have already told you. I will not spend much time on this. Okay, and I hope by the time I mean you have uh, learned how to switch uh, from the bigger to smaller panel. I mean when to I mean make the blackboard bigger and when to make my slide bigger. I hope you have been able to do that. Okay, fine. Uh, Okay, dimension field, I'll, I'll come back to this later on. But since we are, uh, since, since we are on the solution of a differential equation and the interval of definition, so let me, let me spend, a, <clears throat> uh, spend some uh, more time on this. I have uh, already defined this. See, this is the formal definition of interval of definition. So, as I have told you, that you, whenever I talk about a differential equation, say for the time being, let, let me just simply think about 
a first order differential equation like this. Okay, so when I'm going to define uh, when I will define the solution or when I am seeking the solution of this differential equation, say in the form phi y equal to phi of x, then of course this function, this function I am going to be seeking in a certain interval, in a some certain interval, say a b. Right, so then that particular interval is going to be called the interval of definition of the solution. Okay, so this is what it is. You cannot take uh, the solution of an ordinary differential equation without simultaneously taking uh, the interval. Okay, the interval i in I mean definition 1.12, so this is nothing but whatever is written. I mean, uh, just above this in, the, in your slide is variously called, as I have told you, interval of definition, interval of existence, or interval of validity, or the domain of the solution, and can be an open interval, a closed interval, an open closed interval, and so on. Now, here there is some something interesting coming here. This domain, this domain, okay. Domain of solution. Domain of solution. Okay, fine. So, domain of solution is nothing but the interval of uh, definition of the solution. Now, the thing is, there is a subtle difference between the domain of the solution, okay, and say, suppose i of x as a function is the solution of the differential equation. So, there is a difference between the domain of the solution and domain of the function. Domain of the function. Domain of the function. Okay. So let me just uh, try to explain it to you with, a, with an example. Okay. So before that, before that, uh, let me verify uh, that uh, the given expressions on the right of each of a and B, it is the solution of the given differential equation. Is it okay with everybody? Can you, are you following me? Can somebody answer? Yes, sir. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, 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 now simply look at those equations in these slides and the given solution. I hope you agree. I mean, if you plug in those values of y, okay, or those values of the function, for example, in the very first case, when I am talking about your dy dx, this is equal to this is equal to x y to the power half. Then, if I plug in y equal to I mean 16 x to the power 4, if you plug that in, it is going to be a solution of that, right? You can easily check it. Okay, you you don't have to try to solve this uh, given equation. You simply plug that in, and if it, it satisfies, then it is a solution. Okay, fine. I hope I have a third one here. Uh, I have a okay, third one will come later. Is it okay with everybody? Like say you simply plug that in, it becomes I mean it satisfies the differential equation. Okay, fine. Now the question is, and of course, I mean they also talk about the trivial solution. Now you can see that if you plug in y equal to zero in both these uh, examples that are under consideration, then you will see that y equal to zero is definitely, uh, de I, I, I shouldn't say definitely a solution, but I'm saying that y equal to zero definitely satisfies the given differential equations, right? So they also form a solution, but we have to be a little bit skeptical about that. I'm saying that they are solution. Now, the thing is that whenever you talk about the solution, you have to think about where that solution being a function, where that function exists, okay? Whether there is some difference between that, uh, that function as a function and as a solution. So that is where we are going to concentrate in our next slide, okay? Fine. So now, uh, let us come to solution curve. Now, solution curve is nothing but, I mean, if a, function satisfy a given differential equation in a certain interval, okay? You know that that interval is nothing but interval of definition or uh, interval of definition or 
from a log solution. Okay, so then the graph of the function is called a solution graph. That's it. It is as simple as that. You don't need to worry about that. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so now, where did my I don't know where did my shared content go? Just a minute. Are, are you seeing the uh, PowerPoint presentation? No. no. And somehow, all of a sudden, it got vanished. Just a minute. All of a sudden, it vanished. I don't know how. Just. It is coming back on for this. And of course, we need some pause between. Okay, this I have already explained to that. Okay, fine. So now I want to come to this, as I have, I have been telling you, that there's a subtle difference between the domain uh, of a function and the domain of a solution or integral of the function. Okay, so now, okay, fine. Now, see, say, suppose I'm considering your y equal to 1 by x as a function, right? y equal to 1 by x as a function, okay? So then you will say that, I mean, where, where is the domain? I mean, what, what is the domain of this function? Can, can somebody tell me? Can somebody, I mean, unmute and uh, tell me what will be the domain? R minus single to zero. Minus infinity to infinity and x at the point zero, right? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Fine. Okay. So the domain is minus infinity to infinity, but we are going to exclude the point zero because at zero it is not defined, right? So this is the domain. This is the domain for this function. Okay. Now suppose. Now suppose uh, maybe I can simply consider something like uh, dy dx equal to minus one by x squared, right? So obviously. Uh, y equal to 1 by x would be a solution, right? Is it okay with everybody? Fine. So now, if I consider, if I consider the, uh, I mean, internal of definition of this differential equation, okay, which y equal to 1 by x is the solution, so then, uh, can you tell me, I mean, whether I can say that the Domain of definition of the solution is uh, this. Yes, can somebody answer me that question? Yes. So one, so one by x is not differentiable at zero. Okay. No, that is that is fine. My point is, can I can I use this as my interval of uh, definition of the solution? Yes? Yes. Yes? Any, I mean, does somebody disagree with that? Sir, my R difference single to zero is not an interval. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes, it is not an interval, right? Yes, fine. So, yeah. So it is not an interval because I, it is not because I have said that the interval of definition. Okay, so let, let me get rid <clears throat> uh, get rid of the word interval. Say if I use if I use the word I mean domain of the solution. Okay, can this be the domain of the solution? Just tell me that. Suppose I am I have done away with the concept of interval now. Can it be the domain? I think domain is connected. So 
it can't be domain. Okay. Okay, fine. Okay. Then let me let me try and explain it. Okay. So suppose this is zero. Suppose this is zero. Okay. There is some negative infinity and some positive infinity here. Okay. So this is my picture. Fine. So basically, if I want to use this as a domain, okay, it is almost continuous, or I am considering a I am considering a big interval, okay, which simply does not have the point zero belonging to it. Okay, fine. Now let us assume that let us assume that we are seeking a solution. We are seeking a solution card. We are seeking a solution card for this one. And then the solution card is something like this. Okay. Now my point is what is going to happen here for the for the solution card? Now you know that because this is a differential equation. Say even if it is a first order differential equation, you need differentiability at each point. Is it okay? Fine. Can you guarantee yes, me the differentiability of the given function in the neighborhood of zero? Mm -hmm. Sorry, sir, can you repeat the question? My point is that, say, suppose I have got a solution curve, right? Okay. And suppose I am assuming that the domain of definition of that solution is negative infinity to infinity except the point zero, right? Yes. Now, like say, and you know that differential equations are nothing but certain expressions with, with some derivative which satisfies some relation. Okay, certain expression, some in, in the, some equality. Okay, so now, and you know, since they, I mean, consist of derivatives. So suppose I am considering only a first order, I mean, differential equation. So that means I definitely need, I mean, differentiability of the function at every point in that interval. Now, if I choose negative infinity to infinity except the point zero as my uh, domain of the solution, so can you define the derivative of the solution in the neighborhood of the point zero? Mm -hmm. Right? So, See, it requires continuous differentiability of the function everywhere in the domain of definition. Fine? So that is why if I say that this is the solution of a differential equation, then I cannot use this as my domain. Okay? So then my domain will be either zero to infinity or negative infinity to zero. Okay? It cannot be a union of that. Remember that. Okay. So that is why whenever we talk about the solution of a differential equation or we talk about uh, interval of definition, we always talk about, we always talk about sometimes you will see that uh, the largest inter uh, the largest interval where the solution is buried. Okay. Or they use the word uh, I mean largest uh, interval of definition. Or maximal uh, interval. Is it okay? Because it may be so that uh, the, I mean, differential equation is varied at multiple intervals separately. And then, if we are talking about the largest uh, interval of definition, we are going to simply seek the, I mean, the largest amongst all those intervals where the differential equation is varied. Is it okay now? Like, so here, for example, you can see, uh, again it is gone. I guess whenever somebody try to log in or log out, then uh, I mean the slide goes. So I request you that you please log in beforehand.
I don't want to do this exercise over and again. And I'm again requesting, please, all of you, log, I mean, log in beforehand. I mean, I know that some of you may go away, but please. Okay, see here. Uh, can everybody access now the slide? Yes, okay, fine. So now you, you can see there on the right, on the right there in the uh, slide, you can see that the solution y equal to 1 by x, they have defined in the interval 0 to infinity. It is not necessary that 0 to infinity is the only uh, interval of definition, but you, you could have used negative infinity to 0. I'm talking about the open interval. Okay, fine. So this is the difference between your domain of definition of a function and interval of uh, definition of the solution. Okay, fine. So this is about solution term. So now let me get back to what my skill term here. Okay. Now, let me uh, give you an idea of uh, something called direction field. Have you done it before direction field? Is there anybody who hasn't done direction field before? Hmm? Everybody has done? Uh, sir, give a quick explanation, please. Okay, fine. See, let, let, okay, even if you have done it already, so let us try to recall it. So basically, this direction field, I'll, I'll, I'll give it what it is. What it is, but before that, let's this is direction field. So before that, now say, uh, suppose I'm, I'm talking about the, uh, talking about an NF order differential equation. Okay, and suppose I know that y equal to pi x is a solution. Okay, or maybe let us make it very simple. So suppose I am simply considering uh, this first order differential equation. I still have roped in any condition here. Okay, and suppose I know that y equal to x is a solution of this differential equation. Okay. So now, if this solution is explicitly or in certain places implicitly known, so then I can easily plot, I can easily plot the solution curve, right? I can easily plot the solution curve. So one direction field, one direction field helps you is that you can have an idea about the solution curve, about the solution curve without actually solving this differential equation. Is it okay? Fine. So, uh, for example, now let us uh, simply think about this equation. You know that uh, the equation that you see in this slide, it is nothing but the equation of the following body. So, basically here, uh, on the left hand side of the top equation, m dv dt, so that is nothing but acceleration. So, here, because the body is falling, then what is going to happen? Then it is going to have some resistance of air, okay? So that resistance of air, again, I mean, because it is resisting the falling bodies, so it is working in the opposite direction of the acceleration due to gravity, okay? And then if you assume that that resistance is directly proportional to the velocity, so you get some proportionality constant, so that is what they are using here as gamma. And uh, then you simply uh, have the expression on the right-hand side, okay? So they have simply equated the force uh, as a combination of acceleration due to gravity uh, and the resistance. And eventually you get equation five, okay? So now equation five, you can see that it is uh, simply dv dt and this is 9.8 by, uh, if you use the value of acceleration due to gravity minus d by five, okay? Minus b by pi. So now, what is direction field? Again, direction field, I mean, you can have 
something uh, explicitly known, okay, and uh, where something is not explicitly known. Okay, now what I mean by this is that so if you compare, if you compare this to something like say dy dx equal to f of x1. Okay, so if I consider d to be equal to say y and t uh, as x, then you will see that here, here I simply have something like dy dx equal to some function of y. Right? I don't have to get rid of the independent variable here. Okay? So even that you don't need to worry about it. So what we can do here, what we can do here, like say, say obviously here t is my independent variable and here v is my dependent variable. Is it okay? Fine. So now uh, suppose I, I, I take a fixed value of v. Suppose you are v equal to 40. V equal to 40. So then if v equal to 40, so maybe what I can do, like say, suppose this is 40, uh, this is 20, and suppose this is like uh, 50 and so on. I am just going to draw a couple. Huh? So now, if v equal to 40, then you can see that this is going to be 8. So this is going to be 1.8, right? When v equal to 40. Okay? Fine? Is it okay with everybody? Yes. 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 Okay, so now I have got dv dt, this is equal to 1.8 for all values of v equal to 40. Okay, irrespective of whatever is the value of t, for all t, it becomes 40. And what is this? This is nothing but if you suppose you, you have known the solution as a function of t, and what is dv dt? Okay. It is nothing but the slope of the tangent to the curve, right, at the point t, fine? Here it is giving slope as 1.8. Always remember, slope, whenever we perceive slope, whenever we perceive slope, how we, we can perceive uh, this slope? So 1.8 is slope, so that means for one, you need for one unit of the horizontal axis, you are moving 1.8 unit of the vertical axis. Is it okay to everybody? Fine. So then, if I want to find out the direction of the slope, it is going to be something like this. Is it okay? See, for an increasing function, the slope is going to be positive, right? Okay. So this concept, this concept is called run and rise. If I am, I am thinking about an increasing function, okay? If I am thinking about the decreasing function, the slope is going to be negative, so then it is going to be run and fall. Is it okay to everybody? Now is it clear? Fine? So now, what is going to happen? For this 40 at each point, say if you are going to have slope like this, I am I, assuming that this represents I mean, a slope of 1.8. Okay? So now, if I think about when v equal to 50, if I think about v equal to 50, so it is going to give me 10. So for v equal to 50, your this slope is going to be minus 0.2. Is it okay? Fine. So that means for the v equal to 50 line, so it is going to be, slope is going to be coming down. Slope is going to be coming down. Something like this. Okay, fine. So now, if I plot all of them, if I plot all of them, then you will see that you will see that you are you are getting some vectors. You are getting some vectors at each point at each point uh, of the T V line. Okay. So with the help of these vectors, it is going to give you an idea of the solution. So now from here, because the independent variable t was absent, like it was not explicitly known, so that is why you may not have an idea of this. Okay, 
But now let me <coughs> come to a more easy example, so it will be more clear to you. So now let me come to the direction field. So what is the direction field? Say suppose you are giving a differential equation from where you can find out the uh, slope of the solution curve or the slope of the uh, independent variable. So then if at each point, if at each point of the uh, like say uh, independent dependent variable plan, like say independent dependent variable plan means here it is T B plan. So if your I mean x was independent variable, y was dependent variable, I would say that in x y plan, right? So now if you know explicitly what is the slope at each point so then at the each point you can at each point you can define a vector so that means at each point you can define a vector field so that field is called the direction field okay so now you can see here the formal definition if we systematically evaluate f here f means what they have done they are simply considering this equation Okay, dy dx equal to f of x y. So f f is nothing but it is the slope of uh, the tangent to the curve y equal to I mean some function of x. Is it okay? Fine. So if we systematically evaluate f over a rectangular grid of points in the x y plan and draw a line element and at each point x y of the grid with slope f of x comma y. So then the collection of all these elements is called a direction field or a slope field of the differential equation dy dx equal to f of xy. Is it okay? Fine. So now uh, let me take, let me take, yes. Can you repeat it? Uh, it is, your voice is breaking. Sir, it is valid for only first order differential equation. Ah, uh, that's a good question. That's a good question. That is why I told you that if the given differential equation allows you to find the first order derivative somehow, okay, then it is possible. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, I, <clears throat> I should first order differential equation definitely. Fine, but if yes. somehow you are able to find out the first order derivative, that should be good enough for you. Is it okay? Yes. Fine. Huh. So now uh, let us let us consider uh, the other another example. So here, uh, if you if you can follow the cursor here, what we can do, what we can do, I can simply take. I mean, this x y arbitrary. I can consider some arbitrary point here. And because I only have the uh, expression for dy dx, so I can draw the vectors. I can draw the vectors at each point, okay, where the coordinates x, y, z are known. So now this is the this is the direction field. This is the direction field. You can see with the arrow heads, it is going to give you the direction field. Okay, and you already know how to find out this arrow head. Simply, if you know the uh, I mean uh, slope, the value of the slope. Then simply, as I have told you, if it is positive, run and rise. Okay, for one unit, you go to if your slope is m, m unit up, right? If it is positive, m unit down. If it is negative, right? So in that way, you can find out the variation of the vectors. Okay, fine. And now, if I consider a, a solution here, you can easily verify that y equal to c to the power uh, point one into x squared. So th this is the solution. Now, if you form the solution curve, you can see that exactly they are nothing but what was being indicated by what was being indicated by the direction field. So now is it clear? Direction field is clear now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I hope it is yes for everybody. Okay. So even if it is not, <coughs> what you do? In uh, Jill and Kulen book, they have a chapter on the direction field. Okay, but this is so. It is very easy. Okay, fine. So this is about uh, direction field, and you may be thinking why I have introduced this uh, concept because it gives you an idea of the solution. 
Okay, even without solving it. That is the beauty of it. Fine? Okay. So now let me. This is going to be pretty straightforward. But again, uh, do you need some light for the blackboard? Because I have switched off the lights. Now I can see that it is going to rain here. So, at least, I mean, if it is going to be raining, then you will be having a uh, feel of the weather here at uh, IIT Guamti campus. So, maybe I think, yeah, I'll switch on the lights. So, now let me come to explicit versus implicit solution. Okay, so before going into uh, the solution type, uh, let me, uh, okay, let me consider a first order differential equation. Uh, okay, and uh, then let me consider a second order differential equation like this. Uh, so this is equal to zero. Okay. So now, see, if I solve this, if I solve this, then uh, what I'm going to get, for example, like say, uh, let me take very uh, uh, okay. Suppose dy dx equal to some constant a. A is known. Huh? A is a constant. Okay. So then. You know that the solution is going to be simply something like dy dx. This is equal to uh, ax plus b. Uh, I'm, I am taking the uh, simplest of solution, right? So now, so basically, dy dx equal to a. This is of this form, right? And then you have seen that the solution is some form like phi times uh, phi or something else, uh, maybe. Maybe let me call this C because I'll be using C later on. Uh, okay, fine. So it is x, y, c equal to 0. Is it okay, everybody? Fine? Sir, is it dy by dx is equal to a plus c or is it the solution y is equal to ax plus c? Is it what? Uh, you wrote dy by dx is equal to ax plus c. Yeah. So it is another differential equation. It is what? It is another differential equation. No, 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 no. It is it's sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, okay. It's y, y, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it is y equal to x plus. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Sometimes I will do uh, this one unintentional, but sometimes I'm going to do intentional mistakes. So you guys will have to be alert. Okay, yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you for this. Okay. So now you can see that uh, this solution can be put into this form, right? Okay. So if I consider this form, so then you know that the solution is explicitly available, right? Okay. And if, when the solution is explicitly available, still I can write it in the implicit form like this. Okay, fine. It may so happen that in, in this case we were fine. Okay, anyway, it was an implicit form, uh, it was expressible in terms of the implicit, in, uh, implicit form, but still the explicit form was known. Okay, but there may be situations where the uh, getting the explicit form may not be that easy. Okay, so that is where the concept of implicit solution comes from okay for example for example i mean uh, let us consider uh, this is very long uh, don't worry i i i i'll just uh, uh, let me go to the verification part after that i will come back to the theory part again. okay so this you already know, like verify that x squared plus y squared equal to 25 is an implicit uh, solution of the differential equation dy dx equal to minus x by y. Okay, it, it, it is pretty straightforward. Like uh, 
if I mean uh, it is 25, okay. So if I differentiate it, so then you only know that 2x plus 2y dy dx equal to 0, dy dx equal to 0. So from here you get, I mean, dy dx, this is equal to minus x by y. Okay, so obviously, obviously you know that, obviously you know that your uh, see, so now you can see that x squared plus y squared equal to 25. Oh. So this can be uh, simply written as this can be simply written as something like g g uh, x y c equal to g, right? Because say suppose now from here I can easily write like say y equal to plus minus 25 minus x squared. Okay. But in some cases, it may not be easier to find the explicit expression for this solution. Okay, fine. So in that, that case, what we are going to do, we are going to simply stick to this form, which is going to constitute the implicit solution. Is it okay? Fine. But one thing you should remember, whenever you have an implicit solution, you must be able to find at least one explicit expression. So can you tell me what, what is the reason behind that, that you must be able to find at least one explicit uh, form? Yes, can somebody answer me that? Yes? Anybody? I think it's come from the explicit for uh, explicit theorem. There is one theorem from multi multi variable. Uh huh. Okay. So suppose we we we, we don't know anything about that. Uh, uh, I think it is it is a uh, implicit function theorem. Yes, yes, sir. Function theorem. Okay. Suppose we are not aware of the implicit function theorem. Uh, so then. I mean, just by using your common sense, what, what you can think about it. So, for example, you consider the circle x squared plus y squared equal to 25. Why I am looking for an explicit form? Although implicitly I already know. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, I think uh, it is very tough to handle the impl uh, implicit form. So. No, no. You just visualize the circle. Then Can you visualize the circle? Now can you give me the answer? I think explicit solution is, is, is in, in as, a, as a function we can view it. Exactly. Graph of the function, right? Whenever you come, see, the solution curve is the graph of the function, right? Okay. Then, now if you define it, in terms of implicit, okay, this is going to give you a solution. But which solution, right? Isn't it? I I cannot consider, I cannot consider like this yellowish part to be my solution part, isn't it? Is it okay with everybody? Are you getting my point or not? This is X, this is Y. So can the yellowish part be the solution curve of a differential equation? You have sir, sir, this is a function. So at one point, yes. it, uh, its value is 2. Yeah, That's what it is. Like, say, if you draw a vertical line, so you are not going to have a unique image, right? Yes, sir. Isn't it? So it is not going to be a function. Yes, sir. Now you are getting the point. You don't have to worry about the implicit function theorem at all. The simple fact is that you must be able to obtain, you must be able to obtain an expression in terms of the independent variable as a function. Is it okay? Fine. But, so, but yes. sometimes we may not. But sometimes it's not possible to uh, draw the graph. Uh, no. In that case, you, okay. you see, 
whenever there is an implicit solution, you must remember that one explicit expression is always a variable. Okay. If it, if it is difficult, one explicit expression is always available. Okay, fine. There has to be one explicit expression. Okay, uh, I think uh, yes. I I I I'll, I'll ask you uh, some some more questions, and then it will be more clear to you. Okay, fine. So. Uh, and uh, in, in the write-up that is there in slide, uh, just one thing you have to. I, I'm coming to whatever my uh, that some some students say that it is may not be possible. Like say, particularly for the nonlinear equation, it is difficult to find some. Not it is difficult. Uh, sometimes it may be extremely difficult to find an uh, explicit expression. So that is where we we will go for the implicit one. Okay, fine. And again, remember from the implicit one, you should be able to retain the original given differential equation. Only then you will be able to claim that it is a solution of the given differential equation implicitly. Okay, so now let me again come back to this circle. Uh, so you know that, see, the, here the complex circle is drawn, it is given as implicit solution, right? But you cannot take the whole portion of the uh, circle as a function, isn't it? So you must be, be splitting it into two parts in order to get the expression in X as a function. So here, implicit solutions, uh, sorry, implicit solution is on the left hand side, and explicit solutions are given. You can have two explicit solutions, like y1 equal to this. And y2 equal to this, and of course, both these solutions are valid in the interval uh, of an interval minus 5 to 5. Is it okay? Fine. So now let me ask you a very, it is not 3D. Okay. Uh, so can this be, can any relation of the type be a solution of the above differential equation? Above differential equation may dy dx equal to. Uh, minus x by one. Hmm? They are linearly dependent. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't think too high. Don't think too high. Just, just, just look at the expression. Yes. Just look at the expression. Obviously, that expression satisfies the given differential equation, right? Or you can you can retain the given differential equation out of the expression x squared plus y squared equal to c. But can it be an <coughs> a solution or an implicit solution? That is the question. Hmm? Yes. What happens? Hmm? Sir, if it is satisfying, then it, it has to be a solution like. No, no. You must be able to define an interval in order to have the solution. So if you have this situation, if you have this equation, can you have an interval in real line to where the equation is going to be valid? No, sir. No, right. sir. Yes. No. So that is why that is why you that that C must be positive. Only then it is going to form a solution. So now let me tell you one thing. So now like uh, from this one, this one. So obviously, this was of the form your f of x y y prime equal to zero, fine. And I can get a solution of the type g x y 
c equal to 0, right? Okay, and again, this c is on the parameter, fine, and this c cannot be anything for this particular equation. This particular equation, if you are to get a solution of this form, which I am <coughs> writing as an explicit, sorry, implicit function like this. So then C has to be positive. That is the first thing. Okay, fine. And uh, now this is called a parameter. So for this equation, you are getting only one parameter because this is a first order differential equation. So if you have a second order differential equation, so then you are going to get two parameters. Okay. So I am going to call this a one parameter family of solutions. So why it is called the family of solutions? Because you know that by varying, by allocating different values of C, of course, as a uh, positive constant, okay? So you can get different circles, okay? So all these circles are going to form a family of solutions for this given differential equation. So that is one parameter family of solutions. So similarly, out of a second order differential equation, you are going to get two parameter family of solutions, okay? So this is what, uh, this is what is uh, being <coughs> interpreted here. So now you can see that f x y c equal to zero and g x y c one c two equal to zero, fine? Okay, so as I have told you, so these are the family of solutions. So similarly, for an nth order differential equation, you are going to get a, a what? Family of solution will be how many parameters will be there? Yes? Parameter. M parameter. N parameters. Yes. yes. So we are going to have n parameter family of solution. Is it okay? So it is pretty straightforward, right? So I don't want to write down uh, anything else on that. Okay. So now, yes. What does it mean? So can you can you give me some conclusion out of this about the differential equation, whatever order it is, about their solutions? How many solutions would be there for a differential equation? Yes. A differential equations can have how many solutions? Yes? So it can have no solution, it can have many solutions. Infinite. infinite number of solutions. If it exists, then it's infinite. Is it always going to have an infinite number of solutions? So, so if it exists, then it is infinite. Uh, not okay. No, sir, it, it can be anything, it can be unique, it can be no, it can be many. <laughs> yeah. Say it is it is mm -hmm. going to depend mm -hmm. upon under what conditions initial, con initial I mean. conditions. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, okay, but this tells you that a given differential equations equation can have infinite number of solutions. Okay, can have, can have. Okay, not always have, but it can have more than one solutions. Okay, fine. Of course, I mean later on we are going to do. I mean. You get this and existence theorem, from there something will come out. So this is what I mean by that. So now let us do quickly, and I think I have another five minutes. So let us do it quickly. So now uh, here, I mean, the, you can see that in the slides that there is a given differential equation, and uh, you can solve <coughs> you can solve it. Uh, so uh, please believe me that uh, those curves, th those are given there, uh, they represent the solution curves for different Please don't try to control the presentation, then it will be hot thing. I can see here that another user to control of Control. Someone else is now in control of the presentation. Please don't try to do it. Again, you are disrupting my.
someone may have another class or he or she is trying to run away and in that process uh, my slide is like this uh, and Uh, for us, it is frozen at example three. It is not moving at all. Uh, yeah, that is what it is not moving here also. Okay. I don't know what is happening here. So I think there are four people who are trying to get control. I can see their names, but I'm not going to change the names here. Uh, because other other subjects know it. So, do we, do we have a class at four today? No, sir. No? Just, I like to. I was about to finish, so I'm not going to finish. I know you guys are tired. You want to enjoy your weekend, but okay, fine. So here, so you have already seen that uh, the given differential that that dy dx is equal to minus x by y. So it possesses a family of solution in terms of circles. Okay, circles of different regard. So now that one parameter family of solutions, it can be <coughs> written in terms of something like g of x, y, c equal to g, right? And you know that for different values of c, you are going to get different solution curve. So taking all of them together, it forms a family of solutions. So that kind of solution is called the general solution, okay? So now, if I assign a fixed value of the parameter, then it is going to give you a solution which is called a, the, called a particular solution, uh, not the particular solution, because for different values of the parameter, you are going to get different solutions. So each of those solutions will be called one particular solution. So, so far, we have known about general solution as which comes from the uh, family of solutions then we have uh, come to particular solution right we have come to particular solutions and so so now what is a singular solution so now you you look at uh, the uh, slide at the top. I hope uh, everybody is uh, seeing that. So you can see here, you can see here that uh, if I consider, if I consider this one, uh, you can try to solve it. And you can easily <coughs> see that, I mean, y equal to 16x to the 4 and y equal to, I mean, uh, 1 by 4 x squared plus c whole squared. <coughs> Okay, so they are both solutions. But in fact, what is happening here? What is happening here? Like when I am trying to solve this equation, it is going to come up with a parameter c here, right? So this is nothing but the general solution, which is nothing but one parameter family of solution here, right? And if you plug in what, what will give you this solution when you plug in c equal to Zero. Zero, right? So that means this is a general solution or one parameter family of solution, and uh, this is a particular solution. Okay, fine. Now you can see that. Now, if I plug in y equal to zero, okay, here, obviously dy dx equal to zero, first derivative of zero is zero, I mean that y equal to zero is zero, fine. 
and if you plug that in in the right hand side it is also be satisfied so we have verified that y equal to 0 is also a solution of this given differential equation is it okay fine is it okay with everybody yes sir yes sir yeah but now you can see can i get this solution from the one parameter family of solutions here no right that solution that solution does not belong to this one parameter family of solution such solutions which do not belong to that one parameter or I mean, depending upon the order of the different solution, which does not belong to the family of solutions, okay, is called a singular solution. So that is where I will come back here. So a singular solution is what? Sometimes a different solution possesses a solution that is not a member of a family of solutions of the equation. That is, a solution cannot be obtained by specifying any of the parameters in the family of solutions. So such an extra solution is called a singular solution. Okay. So now here you can see that like said, the first solution is a particular solution, second one is one parameter family of solution and the third one is your singular solution. Is it okay? Fine. And <clears throat> I hope, I mean today you are getting more comfortable in my classes. So I'm going to end my class of today here and probably, probably my next class uh, on Tuesday, it is going to be from 12, 12 to 1.15, okay? So definitely I'm going to, I mean, inform you about it and if not, then we'll stick to our original schedule of 3 p.m. Is it okay? Fine. So then yes, everybody take care and stay healthy and have a great weekend. Okay, I'll see you on Tuesday.